Now, our first speaker today uh, is uh, Abe Collins. And Abe is with New Soil Matrix Incorporated in St. Albans, uh, Vermont. Abe is a cattle grazer in St. Albans and the founder of New Soil Matrix. Abe is a co-founder of the Soil Carbon Coalition, which is sponsoring the Soil Carbon Challenge, a local global contest to see how quickly land managers can accrue carbon in soils. Previously, he co-founded Carbon Farmers of America, a Vermont farmer-owned company that introduced the idea and practice of accelerated topsoil formation as a means of mitigating and adapting to climate change to many farmers and policymakers around the world. Welcome, Abe. We're glad you're here. It's become clear to me, especially in the last five years, that cities, companies, society in general are very dependent on the interface between the rest of society and the land, which is the farmers and the ranchers. And I think there are some big market opportunities in front of us that we can grab the bull by the horns on. Clearly, for this city, it's too late. Uh, by way of further introduction, I farm on a small farm in St. Albans. Uh, this was our first summer grazing beef, and I had a really good time with it. I've milked cows for the last seven years up there. At some point in that process of grazing and working with the land and seeing what we could do for the soil, this was in the dairy, the dairy days. This is a key line plow, something that we use regularly in our soil work. We realized that we were changing soil properties very fast, and production was changing, and the way that water hitting the land was behaving was becoming very different. And we thought, wow, what if we tried to monetize this? And as a way to uh, encourage other producers to do this soil formation thing with us. And we formed Carbon Farmers of America. I'm glad we did it a long time ago, uh, because we got to make all of our mistakes and know what we didn't want to do from here forward. We learned some things. Carbon is really important. It's a wonderful metric for looking at land and how it's functioning. And it's one of many. And people don't want to buy carbon or anything like this very much. They want the benefits that come from the carbon that's in the soil. And that became real clear. And it actually became clear that we would need to monitor for more than carbon if we were going to open up market opportunities for, this, for the many, many benefits that come from soil. In many places on that farm, there's sort of the typical topsoil profile in that area of Vermont, six to eight or nine inches of soil, underlain, in our case, by eight feet of blue clay. With the grazing and the physical aeration and playing with things like putting milk on the land and just paying a lot of attention to the plant structure and roots going down as deep as we could, one year we found that we increased the A horizon of the topsoil by eight or nine inches. That was an astounding year, and it was from that point forward that we really started looking not just at what we were doing, what our neighbors were doing, but around the world and finding that uh, the producers are leading. There's some amazing work going on, and every day I find out more and am astounded and more and more encouraged about the uh, prospects for civilization as a whole to move forward. So my opening assumptions in all this is that increasing soil carbon and enhancing soil properties in general is key to environmental security, broadly conceived of, and rural and ur urban economic development. Cities really need the services that come from covered, aggregated, high carbon, biodiverse soils across landscapes. That's where the security and the economics really start to flow. And that's when we can accurately talk, I think, about the end of the oil age and the beginning of the soil age. If the oil age is going to end, we have to land somewhere. And the soil age is uh, a good place to do it. That's a phrase coined by Jim Laurie. The watershed and global services uh, generated by soil, they're decreasing in supply every year and increasing in demand. That's a great place to be if we're a provider in the sense of being able, as land managers, to build topsoil. And topsoil, from what I've seen in about the last 20 years, can be built pretty quickly. There's a lot of incredible examples out there for us to look at. So cities need it, land managers can produce it, let the markets begin, right? There's probably a few more details that we need to 
drab. Here's a profound quote to me from a man named Charles E. Kellogg. And this was in the 1938 USDA yearbook of agriculture called Soils and Men, which I bet a lot of people have read. Do civilizations fall because the soil fails to produce? Or does a f soil fail only when the people living on it no longer know how to manage their civilization? I've been reading this every day for a long time now, and every time it makes me think more and more. The assumption is there. Everything comes from the soil. That is the starting point. We can't get past that. We ignore it, of course, at our own peril. The erosion rates these days, we've talked about it. We can't talk about it into the ground enough, but you know, it's 10 times the rate of loss relative to the rate of actual soil formation probably in the US, 30 to 40 times the rate of loss in Africa and in India, much of China. This is pretty bad. Uh, but just us as producers doing a better job isn't a complete enough answer. It's, it's a civilization-wide issue. And we need to come up with broader issues than just us doing a better job in our place, although we have to do that too.